morning we're going to have some singing, Miss Nicole, <clears throat> Miss Jessica, Miss Samantha, if you would, y'all come. Uh, then Miss Kelly will sing something for you this morning. We'll see what the Lord's got for us. And uh, we'll go from there. And uh, appreciate these ladies. Always do a great job. Always yeah. a blessing. Amen. Also, uh, Miss Aubrey had a birthday. And uh, Mr. Ethan, his birthday was 22nd. Okay, so his birthday is the 22nd. So, appreciate these babies. I love all the kids in our church. You say they make noise, yeah? Well, I'd rather have them make a little noise than have cobwebs on the pews. That's what I say. Thank God for kids. And uh, if you get around them, they're hilarious. And uh, last Sunday morning, Oliver walked straight, opened the door, the main door, and walked straight in my office. He said, hey, preacher. I said, hey. He said, I am in a booster seat. Not how you doing. I hope you had a good day. My man walked in and said, I'm in a booster seat. Which I guess at his age is a big deal. You know. And so, but uh, they uh, they are hilarious. Thank God for our kids. We appreciate it. Now, you pray for them as they say.
the last. My beloved spake and said unto me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. For, lo, the winter is past. The rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of the singing of birds is come. And the voice of the turtle is heard in our land. The fig tree putteth forth her green figs. And the vines with the tender grape give a good smell. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Look at verse 14. Oh, my dove, thou art in the clefts of the rocks, in the secret places of the stairs. Let me see thy countenance. Let me hear thy voice. For sweet is thy voice, and thy countenance is coming. Take us the foxes, the little foxes, that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grace. Let's pray. Our Father, this morning we're grateful to be in the house of God. We're thankful for what our ears have heard, what our hearts have felt. Father, this morning we realize what we are. We understand in this flesh dwelleth no good thing. And Father, if anything gets done, Lord, if you receive any glory, Lord, if people get help, Father, you'll have to do it. And so, Father, our prayer is that you would touch these lips of clay. You'd anoint us afresh and anew. You'd give us that which we desperately need, Lord, to preach the Bible. Lord, our prayer is equally important that you would help the listener. Lord, while I speak to their ears, Father, I pray you'd speak to their hearts. Lord, I pray you'd touch the unprofitable servant. You'd anoint us and use us not for our glory, but Lord, for your glory. May you receive all the honor, all the praise, all the glory, and all the adoration this morning. For you're the only one worthy. We love you. Pray you'd help us now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The history of mankind is marked by the sovereign God of the universe. You'll find He uses great events to reveal His presence. And hear me this morning. The evolutionist uh, can't find God the same way a robber cannot find a policeman. Right. Amen. Because he is not looking. Right. Our world simply reveals the evidence of a sovereign God. Oh, yeah. We see His hand throughout human history. From just a brief look at the Scriptures, we see some of these great events. We can see the hand of God in Noah's flood. Amen. How that God broke open uh, the great waters of the deep how the Lord sent the flood and how that flood uh, has changed the course of history forever. We see the hand of God again in our Savior's birth. Amen. Miraculous, supernatural birth of God in the flesh. Amen. But we also see the hand of God at work when Jesus hangs on the cross Right. suffers, bleeds, and dies for all of humanity. Amen. We see Him paying the sin debt of every man, woman, boy, and girl on this planet. Amen. You see Him making a way where there was no way. Right. You see God coming up with a solution to a problem that had no solution. Yeah. Right. And even more impressively, we see the hand of God in the resurrection of Jesus yes. Christ. Amen. Death, yes. Buried, yes. Rose again the third day, Amen. absolutely. Amen. What separates Jesus Christ from every other world religion 
is that he died, but he did not stay dead. Yeah, yeah. Every other leader of every other founder of every other religion, they died, but they never got up again. But our Savior, our Redeemer, the Lord Jesus, rose again victorious over death, hell, and the grave. Yeah. And so we see God uses these great events to remind sinful man of his presence. May I be honest this morning, I got a feeling that God is getting ready to remind us once again that he is in charge and he is the sovereign God of this world. Yeah. I think this world, and for the most part, has forgotten about who God is and what He is. But I got a strange suspicion that God is fixing to remind us right. this morning. Uh, the uh, God reminds us of His presence, lest we forget. There's a God who rules and reigns in the affairs of men. Right. You'll find the next great event on uh, on the schedule of God Almighty is the rapture of the church. While the environmentalists are scrambling around looking for an answer to global warming, God is preparing to gather His people and take them to their eternal home. Amen. While politicians in Washington are fighting and fussing and feuding, trying to figure out how to fix the mess of an economy that we have, God is preparing the saints a home beyond the sky. Yeah. Well, while the protesters are out in the streets robbing and looting and fighting and arguing, God is getting ready to step out on the clouds and rapture the church of the living God Amen. out of this old Amen. sinful Amen. world. Amen. Uh, this morning, thank God, there is hope uh, for the child of God. You're not stuck down here forever. Uh, you will not have to endure this forever. But one day our Savior will come and and he will redeem us and draw us out of this sin sick world. Take us to a place that there'll be no night there. There'll be no sorrow there. There'll be no sin there. There won't be no devil there. I'm glad, thank God, as a born again, a blood bought child of the living God, I have hope this morning that Jesus will come soon. There's hope this morning. If you're here and you're saved, you can have peace in your heart regardless of what you're facing this morning. That's right. well, I'm glad that in spite of our situations or our circumstances, we can have peace and know that God is coming to rescue us and to pull us out yeah. of this world. And when He does, we will leave behind all of our troubles yeah. and all of our cares. Man. But what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see, when I look upon His face, the one who saved me by His miraculous, marvelous grace. What a day, what a day that'll be. You will find in our text that God has given us a picture of the rapture. I want to look at it for the next few moments and try to give you what the Lord has given me concerning the second coming of our Savior. Hear me this morning. Make no mistake. If you've not heard it, you've heard it here. That Jesus is coming soon. We are seeing all of the signs that all of the things taking place that Jesus prophesied would take place and things that would come to pass. You and I are living in that generation and we are seeing the hand of God and the Word of God being fulfilled. And the Lord is going to listen. The trumpet is out of the case, if you will. And before long, in just a little while, the trumpet will sound. All of those who know Jesus as their blessed Redeemer shall be snatched out of this world. We are looking. I am not looking for a hole in the ground. I'm looking for a hole in the sky. When Jesus comes, we shall be rescued. And redeemed. I am saved today. Yeah. I've been saved for 27 plus years. But on that day, 
my salvation will be completed and God will fulfill his promise that he'll never leave me nor forsake me that he would take care of me but finally on that day when I get home to heaven all of salvation will be completed it will be wrapped up and there will be in the very presence of almighty God you realize this morning Jesus is unavoidable Amen. You might try to avoid him here, but when you die, you will stand before him lost or saved. Right. Jesus this morning is unavoidable. Yeah. You're going to have a meeting with him one day. The condition you find yourself in during that meeting is between you and the Lord. Amen. The only way to be prepared for that meeting is to be saved and have your sins forgiven. And have God save you by His miraculous, marvelous grace. Yeah. Yeah. But if you refuse to do so, that does not mean you can avoid the Lord Jesus. All it does mean is that you have postponed that meeting and you will meet Him in your sin and you will not be happy at the outcome of that meeting. Right. And so this morning, when Jesus does come, he will rapture us out, uh, snatch us away, and get us off oh, this, this old sin-sick planet. Yeah. And so this morning in the text, we find a picture, a type, uh, a, a revelation, if you will, of the rapture, uh, the New Testament rapture found in the Old Testament. And so I'm going to use these verses, try to give you three or four things, and then I'm going to eat, all right? Number one. Uh, if you would, I want you to see his return. Look at verse number 8. The voice of my beloved, behold, he cometh leaping upon the mountains and skipping upon the hills. Here we find this Shulamite girl. She is working in the vineyard. When all of a sudden the love of her life appears, he has been gone and she has not seen him in some time. But now when he returns, you will find the first thing he does is he speaks to her. She's in the vineyard working. Uh, this, may I be honest, that's where I want to be found when Jesus comes. Uh, the love of my life. Uh, I want to be in his vineyard. Jesus said this, uh, the harvest is great, uh, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he sends laborers into the harvest. Hear me this morning when Jesus comes. Uh, I don't want to be found uh, sitting on the sideline. I don't want to be found uh, as he used to be or has been. Uh, I do not want him to find me backslid, cold, indifferent but I want to be found with my hands to the plow but doing, I'm fulfilling what God has given me to do and this morning, if you're going to do something for God, if you're going to be found in that state, we better get to work, I'll tell you why Jesus is coming and he's coming very, very soon listen to me this morning God has a vineyard for all of us to work in and to labor in and when he comes, I want to be found in my spot doing what he called me to do and fulfilling his will for my life. Amen. 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 That's right. You'll find she's in the vineyard. And all of a sudden she's working, she's laboring, but then she hears his voice. May I say this? That is exactly what will happen when our Savior returns for us. Right. Before we ever see Him, we will hear His voice. Right. I can hear Him now. I long, I long for and I await the day. I, I, listen, I am impatient. I'd like for the Lord to come right now. Right. This very instant, this very moment, I am ready to go. The older I get, the less uh, allure the, the world has for me. I right. uh, Listen, I've tasted everything the world has to offer. I've experienced everything the world says will make you happy. And hear me this morning. Uh, the only thing that's ever satisfied me is knowing Jesus Christ. Uh, and this morning, the world can't satisfy and the world can't bring peace. But I'm glad this morning that that Jesus does. Uh, hear me? You can have this world. Uh, just give me Jesus this morning. I uh, Listen, uh, this world has nothing for the child of God. Amen. But I'm glad, thank God, we're not stopped down here forever. Amen. 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 That's right. She 
hears his voice. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 says this, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. We will hear him call our names and say, Come up hither. I can picture that little girl out there sweating, out there working in the hot sun, being tired and weary, uh, and the sweat's running down her face. Uh, she's dirty out there laboring in the vineyard. Uh, and she's tired. Uh, and she's thinking, man, uh, this is a, I'm having a tough time. But then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, uh, she hears the voice of her beloved. And it calls her name. Uh, she forgets about the labor. Uh, she forgets about being tired. She forgets about the sweat. Uh, she forgets about the, all the turmoil and struggle. All of a sudden, uh, her heart skips a beat and recognizes the voice of her beloved and she looks up and there he is hear me this morning thank God you may be weary you may be troubled you may be discouraged but hang on this morning dear child of God Jesus is coming and he will rescue us and it'll be worth every mile of the trip just to see him he calls her name She looks up and there he is standing before her. My, what a day when Jesus comes. We will forget about our sorrow and our trouble. We will forget about our toil and our work. And when we hear his voice, everything else will fade away. Yeah. We'll forget about our wounds, our hurts, our problems. And everything will be made perfectly whole on that day. Amen. During World War II, the Japanese forces overran the small, the small island of the Philippines. And as these Japanese forces overran the Philippines, the American forces who were stationed there were forced to pull out. They were led by a man named General Douglas MacArthur. And as he was leaving, he stands aboard the deck of a DC-10. And he said this to the Filipino people. He said, I must go away, but I make you this promise. I shall Amen. return. Yeah. Yeah. And with that, the general turned found his seat on the plane and flew away. Nearly two years passed with no sign of the general. The people of the, Philistines were, uh, of the Philippines were discouraged and weary. They were oppressed. The Japanese forces made them labor and work and made slaves out of them. But one day, those same Filipino people those who have been oppressed, those who are struggling, those who were disheartened and discouraged, they heard a sound. And they look up. And when they look up into the sky, there are, the sky is filled with hundreds of planes. They ran through the streets yelling, MacArthur has returned. MacArthur has returned. He has come to rescue us. Their discouragement has turned into excitement. Their struggle is all forgotten. Right. Their burdens uh, have not even crossed their minds. You say, why? Because MacArthur has come. Yeah. He fights the battle and he delivers uh, the Philippines from the Japanese army. He liberates the Philippines. He provides freedom to the Philippines. And he uh, rescues the Philippines. Right. This morning I can think of another general as he stood on the Judean hillside he said, I must go away, but I make you this promise. I shall return. And listen, down here we're oppressed, we're beaten, we're broken, we're discouraged. But one day after a while, child of God, you'll hear his voice. You'll hear the trumpet sound. And excitement will fill our souls that will know that Jesus.
Jesus has come. No more problems. No more burdens. Nothing but freedom. We will be unshackled from this sinful flesh. And we'll go home to be with the great general who fought the greatest battle the world has ever known. And he won that battle over sin. Hands down. Hands of God. Our general's returning. He's coming. Hey, he said, I shall return. First of all, you will see his return. But secondly, I want you to see her reaction. Look at verse 9. My beloved is like a roe or a young heart. Behold, he standeth behind our wall. He looketh forth at the windows. Shooing himself through the lattice. You realize it was only his beloved who saw him. Yeah. He did not appear to everyone, but only to his beloved. Right. Do you realize that the world on that day, she saw her beloved, the rest of the world went on like any other day, but the one who loved him saw him. Yeah, amen. You realize that when Jesus comes in the rapture, everybody won't see him. That's right. yeah. Amen. Only the saints, only those that have been birthed into the family, the family of God, only those who have been redeemed and washed in the blood, uh, they'll see him. This world will go right on. Uh, they won't even know anything is wrong until millions have disappeared. Yeah. But for those of us who love him, we shall see him. Notice she says she sees him. She's seen him through the lattice. You realize that lattice is made up of thin strips of wood and they are overlaid in a particular pattern. Uh, and that's what lattice is. Uh, you can't see all the way through lattice. But because of the design, it creates small holes about like this. Uh, and you can see through those holes. Uh, you don't get a perfect picture. You don't get an absolutely clear picture. But you can't tell uh, someone's on the other side. Uh, and this morning, it allows you to uh, see through it and recognize uh, uh, something Someone being on the other side. Yeah. There's no way she could have seen him perfectly. There's no way she could see him in great detail. But she was so acquainted with him and loved him so much, she knew it was him, even though she didn't have a clear view. Hear me this morning. I have seen him uh, through the lattice. I've not seen him in all of his glory. I've not seen him with all the pomp and circumstance. But I have, through these years, caught a glimpse of him through the lattice. Uh, maybe it was an answered prayer. Maybe it was a uh, great service. Maybe it was him working something out in my life. But make no mistake, I have seen him, but I have not seen him clearly. I have not seen him in his perfection. But on that day, bless his name, my eyes shall behold my king as he is. Amen. I've seen him. Yeah. I've seen him work. I've seen him move. Yeah. I've seen him do some stuff in y'all's lives. That could only be explained by him. Amen. That's right. This morning, though we may see him through the lattice, we have not seen him in his perfection. Yeah. Oh, but we will. That's right. We have seen him as the wounded, bleeding Lamb of God. We have seen him as the suffering Savior. We have seen him as our high priest and his intercession for us as we pray and watch God uh, hear and answer our prayers. We have seen him uh, move around in the services. We have seen him walk up and down the aisles. But we've only got just a little bit of, uh, of a glimpse of him. We have never really seen all that he is. We've never seen him in all of his majesty and all of his glory. But I promise you, uh, when he comes, you and I will see him. This is what your Bible says in 1 John 3, 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall 
shall be. But we know, but we know, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. I'm grateful, thank God, that one day he'll show up. The one I prayed to, the one I preached about, the one I lived for, the one I loved, I shall see him on that day. I say glory, a glory, a glory. Bless his name. I cannot wait to see my king as he is. I'm grateful, thank God, that I get a glimpse through the lattice. But one day after a while, I'll see him clearly just like he is. It has been those glimpses of him through the lattice yeah. that has kept me going all these years. Yeah. Notice what she does. She starts to brag on him. Yeah. She says this about him. He is like a roe or a young heart. This morning a roe is a gazelle or an antelope. A young heart is a male deer. There is one thing those two animals have in common. They are among the fastest animals on earth. Yeah. What she's saying is this. He sure didn't show up quickly. Mm -hmm. yeah. His return was so fast that it caught me off guard. She was shocked. I mean, just bang, out of nowhere. And there he is. You realize that that's the way it'll be for us when Jesus comes. One minute we're here, and then all of a sudden, bang, we're standing in the presence of our Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Hear me this morning. He said this, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, not the blinking of an eye, in a twinkling yeah. of an eye. Yeah. You can go online and do the research if you choose to, but the twinkling of an eye equals one one millionth of a second. That's how fast Jesus will come. Listen to me this morning. Uh, you uh, you just labor and trying to live for God, trying to honor the Lord, and before you know it, shot, there he is, and you'll be raptured out. Uh, I'm telling you, uh, his appearing will be quick. Uh, this morning, I, I know a lot of Christians that live like uh, Jesus ain't never coming back. Uh, man, what a shock they'll receive uh, when he at last shows up. Uh, the Bible says uh, in a moment, uh, in the twinkling of an eye, he shall appear. Hear me. You won't have time to get ready, child of God. You better you better stay ready right now. If I wasn't ready for the coming of the Lord, I'd find my way to an order and I'd do business with God. Because you will not have time on that day. You see our response number three. I want you to see the request. Look at verse 10. My beloved spake. All right, what did he say? And said unto me, rise up. Yeah. My love, my fair one, and come away. Amen. He speaks to her. What he is saying is this. It's time for you to go. You don't have to labor anymore in the vineyard. It's time for you to go. I want you to rise up. And I want you to come with me. Yeah. All of your labor is over. All of those burdens are over. No longer will you have to deal with any of this. I want you to rise up and come with me. Yeah. You see the picture that is given. <clears throat> One day he will come. He will take us away. I want you to notice how tenderly he speaks to her. He said, rise up, my love, my fair one. He's speaking to his bride. That's how Jesus feels about his church. Yeah. He said, my love. We teach our children that song, Jesus loves me. There could be no greater truth this morning Amen. than the fact that Jesus loves me. Amen. But then he calls her my fair one. He's saying you're beautiful to look upon. Now hear me this morning. In this flesh, 
I ain't much to look at. Right. But I'm glad he don't see me like I am. Mm -hmm. You see, his blood has covered and washed away Amen. all my sins. Amen. So the reason he can call me his fair one is not because of my performance as a preacher or a Christian or a child of God. He's not looking at my performance. He's looking at his very own blood. And when he sees the blood, he says, that's my fair one. Yeah. You say, why? Because all of our blemishes, all of our faults have been covered Amen. by the precious blood of the Amen. Lord Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. We have been washed clean. The old song says, when he sees me, he sees the blood of the Lamb. Amen. He sees me as worthy and not as I am. I'm glad, thank God, when Jesus comes for his church, he will say, arise, my fair one, my love. He's saying the reason you're fair is because the blood has been applied. And because the blood has been applied, he don't see us as, our, as we are with our faults, yeah. our failures. Yeah. Uh, he sees us. Uh, I'm pure and clean yeah. and holy. And he says, arise, my fair one, and come away. He can call her fair because of his own blood. Right. Yeah. Notice this. He says, rise up. Maybe she's down on her knees working. Maybe that's why he calls her to rise up. It's a picture of prayer. That's where you and I do our most valuable labor is on our Amen. knees. Amen. He slips up on her and says, rise up. Nothing left to pray about. You'll have no need where you're going. Amen. You won't ever have to pray again. Amen. That's right. You'll never have another need, another problem, or another burden. One day you and I are going to rise up. Gravity will have no hold upon us. We shall go straight up through the clouds, through the atmosphere, past the moon and the stars, all the way to the third heaven. Yeah. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, you'll find he says, come away. Come away from the low land of many sorrows. Come away from enemy territory. Come away from the sin that has plagued your life. Come away from pain, sorrow, and trouble. I'm glad, thank God, he's coming. And when it comes, I will go away. I, I Listen, I'm leaving out. I, somebody put it like this. I'm leaving out like Superman. But I'm coming back like the Lone Ranger. I'm glad, thank God, that Jesus is coming. And when he comes, I, he will rescue me and pull me out of this whole world. Number four, let me show you this and I'm done. I want you to see the rejoicing. Look at verse 11. For lo, the winter is past. The rain is over and gone. She's rejoicing and worshiping because her beloved has returned for her. And that's what you and I will do when Jesus comes. That first time we lay eyes on him, we'll begin to praise and thank him yeah. for what he's done for us. He says this in verse 10. He says, arise and come away. You'll find that statement twice in our text. You'll find it once in verse 10. Look at the end of verse 10. Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. But then you'll find he says it again in verse 13. Ar at the end of verse 13. Arise, my love, my fair one, come away. You say, why does he say it twice? Well, listen, can I give you something? Uh, listen, uh, he says it twice for a very particular reason. He's, you know, when the rapture happens, the Bible says the dead in Christ will rise first. Yeah. So he says it once for them. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up to meet the Lord and together in the, with, with the Lord to meet the Lord in the air. And so he says it once for the dead in Christ. And then he says it again for those of us who are alive and remain. Uh, brother, what a picture of the rapture of the church. Uh, he gonna call the dead up first. Uh, hear me. I, you say, why does he call them first? They got six feet first further to go than you and I got to go. I, but he'll call them out. And as he's called them out, he'll call you and I out. And we shall be uh, rejoicing in the fact that our Savior has kept his promise. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the rapture's in two parts. The dead in Christ and those which are alive and remain. Verse 11, he says this, for lo, the winter is past. 
You realize this morning the world is a cold, hard place. It's a barren place for the Christian. The world offers little comfort and no solace for the child of God. When you're cold, it's hard to get comfortable. This morning we are living in a winterized world. This world is no friend to grace. And this world, if anything, is more of a hindrance than it is a hell. Amen. It's a cold place to live. But hear me, when he comes, did you see what she said? The winter is past. Yeah. And it's no longer a cold place because the beloved is calling her away. And she's going to a place that will not be cold. Yeah. We'll never know the harshness or the coldness of this world again. This morning, then he, then he said, she said this, the rain is over and gone. Rain comes from storms. Yeah. What she's saying is, when he comes to get me and carries me away, there'll be no more wind. Yeah. There'll be no more coldness. There'll be no more barrenness. Yeah. Yeah. Then she said this, the rain is gone. There'll be no more storms. May I be honest, myself included, I have watched as God's people has walked through many a hardship. I've watched as the waves lapped over their boat. I've watched as the lightning crashed and the thunder roared in their lives. Yeah. I've watched as they stood at the graveside saying goodbye. I've watched as sickness has ravaged their bodies. I have watched as cancer took everything but their mind. I have watched as uh, homes have been broken up. I have watched as sorrow and sadness has filled the heart of the believer. Oh, but listen to me this morning. Where we're going, there'll be no more storms. Not on, notice what she said. She said the rain is over. Then she said, it's gone. If she would have left that statement and said the rain is gone, that means there's potential for the rain to come again. But that ain't what she said. She said the rain is over and it's gone. Amen. There'll be no more yeah. storms on the other side. Amen. I've watched people's health deteriorate. I've watched fighting and fussing and broken hearts. Yeah. Oh, but listen, when he comes, there'll be no more winter. There'll be no more storms in there. Amen. Amen. I dare say it'll take us six months to get used to living in a place where there's no more problems. Yeah. Can you imagine a perfect life? That's what you'll have on the other side. Amen. Amen. This morning, I'm glad that when Jesus comes, there'll be no more winter, there'll be no more storms. No more bills, no more sicknesses, no more funerals. Right. Never another heartache. Yeah. Rejoicing in Him, enjoying Him. We'll leave behind the storms of this life and the problems and sorrows and sadnesses. This morning we can rejoice because He's coming. Yeah. You will find that the Lord clarifies and makes sure you get that this passage is dealing with the coming of the Lord. You will find in verse number 13, the fig tree putteth forth her green figs. May I remind you when dealing with the nation of Israel, Mark, Mark chapter number 13, verse 28, he says this, Now learn a parable of the fig tree when her branch is yet tender and putteth forth her leaves. You know that summer is near. He's talking about the second advent. He's talking about the things that precede uh, His coming. He's talking about all of the events that take place. And hear me. Uh, he said summer is near. Winter is gone when He comes. We know when the interpretation is correct because of the wording of verse 13. And matching Mark, Mark chapter number 13, verse number 28. You realize he's talking about Israel becoming a nation again. Amen. He said that, that happened in 1948, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. He said when you see these things come to pass, 
know that summer is nigh. He said this, uh, the generation that sees Israel become a nation again will be here when Jesus returns. Amen. Listen to me, it's been almost a hundred years. What are we, 25 years? It's been 75 years. A generation in the Bible is somewhere between 40 and 100 years. We're at 75. Ladies and gentlemen, we're getting close to the coming of the Lord. Amen. You say, preacher, what are we going to do? Until then, look at verse number 14, and I'll give you this, and I'm done. Oh, my dove, thou art in the clefts of the rock, in the secret places of the stairs. Let me see thy countenance. Let me hear thy voice. For sweet is thy voice, and thy countenance is comely. You realize until he comes, he has given us the comforter. You realize the Holy Spirit is pictured as a dove all throughout your Bible. Until he comes, we have the Holy Spirit to comfort us, to lead us, and to guide us. She said, I want to hear your voice. You can have the voice of God this morning through the Holy Ghost. But she's not satisfied with just the voice. She wants to see his countenance. But until we can see his face, we will have to lean upon the Spirit of God Amen. and hear His voice. Amen. Until He comes, we can rest and be reassured that He is with us. Because we have His Spirit and we have His voice. And that will satisfy us until we get home and see His face. This morning, Jesus is coming soon. So I'll say this as I close. If you have, listen, if Jesus were to come this morning, are you 100% sure you'd go? Do you know Christ Amen. as your Savior? If you do not, why don't you slip out of your seat and come? Somebody will take a Bible, show you what you have to do with yourself. This morning, the only people that get to go when Jesus comes are those who have been redeemed and saved and washed in His blood. This morning, if you're not saved, you're not going. If you're not saved, you don't get to go when Jesus comes. You will be left behind to face uh, the worst time in human history, the seven-year tribulation period. Water turned to blood. Sun heated seven times hotter. Men, the Bible says men will seek death during that time and death will flee from them. This morning, now is your opportunity to get saved. Now is your opportunity to trust Christ as your Savior. Amen. This morning, He's coming soon. You ain't got a lot of time to do business with God. So I'd get saved this morning. If I was here this morning, I was backslid. I was saved. I knew I was saved. But I hadn't been doing right living for God. I'd get an altar this morning and get right with the Lord because He's coming. Amen. You don't want Him to find you in that position or in that condition. So I'd get an altar and do business with God and get right with Him. That when He comes, I'd be found laboring in His name. This morning, maybe you're here and you're struggling. You're under the burdens of this life. Problems and sorrows. This morning, if you'll come, you can find that sweet dove will help get you through until Jesus comes. Amen. This morning, I know not what you need is. I preach what God's given me as we stand. You need to come. Why don't you come do business with the Lord as she sings. Do you know it? Are you saved?
what the Apostle John said at the very end of your Bible in the book of the Revelation. He said this, even so, come Lord Jesus. Can I say this? I agree with John 150 or so. Even so, come Lord Jesus. There ain't nothing worth sticking around down here. Nothing. And so this morning, I hope you're ready. I hope you know him. I hope you're prepared that if Jesus were to come, my whole prayer is that you're right with him. You're ready. If you're not, you can be. But you'll have to do business. I'll be honest, if the Lord told us when he was coming, I think it would shock us how close we are. This morning, if you're not ready, you will be. All right, our hearts and minds clear. And then you're ready to go in the spirit of God.